Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 2. When we last left off we were about to have a look in the two goody huts, one on the right side, one on the left side over here. So let's do that. Let's move the archer to the first hut over here. We have uh, discovered valuable metal deposits worth 50 gold. That's not the best thing to get, but I guess it will have to do. What about the other one? Uh, you discover a band of wandering nomads. They agree to join your tribe. Wow. So we actually get some settlers. That's cool. Uh, we'll use them to found a city. And I think uh, I see already a spot for that city. There are very good special resources over here. The wine on these hills produces a lot of uh, trade. So we'll go there and try to uh, found a city there. Okay, we have just produced our first unit, the militia or the warriors in Zurich. Um, but uh, first, as I promised you in the previous episode, I would like to discuss uh, the matters of state with the High Council and then tell you something about our goals. So let's uh, do that. Give me more soldiers, noble leader, that they may sheathe their swords in the beating hearts of our enemies! Okay, still the same. Your Excellency, the torch of knowledge sputters in your hands. He speaks the truth, Excellency. Still the same. Excellency, let us make currency instead of swords, for it is wealth that moves the world, and profit that rules it. Okay, you have really nothing new to tell me, right? My talents go to waste, noble leader. Let us send forth our explorers to find other nations. Will do. What about you, Elvis? Last time you had no complaints. That was actually the first time I ever saw it. What about now? Wise men say that only fools run an empire without luxuries, king. I disagree, Excellency. I disagree, Your Excellency. Yeah, that's what they will be telling me for the rest of the game, I guess. He will also try to convince me to raise the luxury rate and they will disagree. Okay, so useless. Um, I think we haven't uh, seen the help for the warriors, so let's uh, have a look. They cost only 10 shields and have really bad stats, but uh, they are cheap so we don't care and we will use them only to enforce the martial law. Let's uh, have a look at the description as well. The earliest military forces were simply the citizens of a city armed with whatever implements they could use as weapons. Although a militia made up of warriors was inexpensive, they were no match for organized armies. Warriors were usually used as a stopgag measure while waiting for superior units to be trained or to defend a city that has been temporarily cut off from military support. In a crisis situation, an assembly of warriors is a better choice than no defense at all. I agree. Okay, so we have built them. I guess we need to continue by building more settlers. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And we will... Um, just stay in the city and fortify. Good, so back to our goals. My primary goal for this episode will be to change the government type to monarchy and then our secondary goals will be to explore, to build more cities, to make contact with other civilizations and so on. By the way, why do we want to change the government? Basically, we are currently under despotism. Let's have a look at what despotism actually is. In a despotism, the ruler has absolute control over his or her subjects, and this control is usually enforced by the military. This system has a tendency to minimize individual freedom and reduce the efficiency of production efforts. Uh, now, this is important. Each unit above the city size costs one shield per turn. So, currently, my warrior doesn't cost me anything because I have one unit in a city which has size 1. But if I have built uh, a second warrior, this would cost me one shield, which would go from the production um, into support, basically. 
Then the second thing is that settlers eat one food per turn. Okay. Up to three military units in each city institute martial law. Each of these units makes one unhappy citizen content. Now, I've uh, already told you last time that we are playing on the hardest difficulty and we will have a lot of unhappy citizens. So we will need those three military units, which will uh, not make them happy, but at least content. If you have more military units, they will not make additional citizens content, so three is always uh, enough. Despotism has a high rate of corruption and waste. The farther a city is from your capital, the higher its level of corruption. So that's why we want to switch to a different type of government, because we will have uh, a lot of corruption and our trade will not be as effective as it could be. Under a despotism, tax, luxury and science rates cannot be set higher than 60%. Uh, in monarchy that will change, so that's another reason why we want to do that. Any terrain square that ordinarily produces free or more of any resource, food, shields or trade, produces one less. This is very important as well. Uh, I want to build my next city close to those uh, wine uh, rich hills. And the wine produces, I think, four or three, um, I think three, not sure, uh, trade arrows. And under despotism, we couldn't effectively use them. It would produce one less. So we want to switch to some other form of government as soon as possible. And the last thing, because of despotism's high rate of corruption, it is almost always an infor inferior form of government try to switch to a monarchy as soon as possible. Exactly, that's the plan. Okay, go back and read something more about the monarchy. A monarchy is ruled by a single person known as a monarch. The monarch's rule is less absolute than that of a despot, but he or she usually has the acceptance of at least the upper class. The aristocrats under this system of government have some economic freedom allowing the civilization to be more productive. Each unit beyond the third unit costs one shield per turn. So even in a city of size one, we can have three units for free. Settlers eat one food per turn, just like in the despotism, no change there. Also no change in the martial law, but monarchy has a moderate rate of corruption and waste, so less than a despotism. And tax, luxury and science rates can be set up to 70%. Monarchy is an excellent form of government for a young civilization, so we are doing that. Go back, close, and now it's finally time to end our turn. We can build some more stuff again, let's improve the walls. Perfect, and we have built a warrior in here as well. We want to change to settlers again. And I think we haven't uh, seen the help for settlers either. So let's uh, see what the statistics are. The settler is four times as expensive as the warrior. It costs 40 shields. It has no attack strength, so it cannot attack, but it can defend itself with a power of one or whatever that is. Has a, a good amount of hit points and a movement rate of one. Okay. Let's read the description also. When cities grew in a size where resources were insufficient to adequately ensure a decent standard of living for the populace, adventurous groups of citizens set out on their own in search of a place to build a new city. Once a suitable site was found, the settlers would build their new homes and develop the land surrounding the city. Eventually the whole process repeated and the new city would send out settlers of its own. This process allowed civilizations to grow throughout history, from the empires of the ancient world to the discovery and settlement of the new world. Yeah, that's very cool. So we'll be building those as well. And you can fortify in this city. Okay. Um, you, my dear settler, can move along the river. Help us explore. And the archer will move left. This guy will, I don't know, continue this way. 
Okay, we are building settlers in our uh, cities. And uh, attitude is fine. And we are making discoveries every five turns. By the way, I'm pressing the keyboard shortcut so that I don't have to go with mouse to the orders uh, or advisors menu every time. So it's F4 for the happiness analysis and F5 for this uh, trade advisor. Everything looks good. So I think we can now continue with the exploration predominantly. Let's end the turn. The people are so happy with us that we can uh, do this almost every turn. Now the settler will move right. You will move down. There are gems. Wow, cool. You will also move down. And we can end the turn again. And the Swiss wise man discovered the secret of monarchy. Let's have a look. Um, allows government form of the same name. We have already read the description of the monarchy, but uh, let's see if it's the same. No, it's not the same, so let's read that one as well. Rule by monarchy developed as a logical extension of the absolute rule of tribal chieftains. Many of the earliest monarchs, such as those in ancient Egypt, claimed that they ruled by divine right. In the spread of European monarchy, during the Middle Ages, however, rulership was generally conveyed upon a leader who could most effectively raise and command an army. Monarchies are dynastic, with the rule of the country passing to the eldest son when the king dies or retires. Monarchs had absolute rule over their subjects, severely limiting the personal and economic freedom of all citizens except for the nobility and the rich upper class. Although monarchies ruled most of Europe for centuries, the unhappiness of lower class citizens eventually grew intolerable, causing several major revolutions. By the mid-18th century, the power of the European monarchs had been severely limited, paving the way for participatory systems of government. Excellent. And uh, now I would like to invest um, our research capabilities into, well, into currency, right? That's what the trade advisor told us. Um, so currency, we should research bronze working. I think the same is for the trade. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we'll start researching the bronze working. Do we need anything else? We don't need map making because we don't need ships. We have a huge continent, we don't need catapults, mysticism would be fine, we don't need pottery, writing would be also fine, but I think I will do the bronze working anyway. You have just acquired knowledge of monarchy which allows you to improve your government. To switch governments you must have a revolution. Select revolution from the kingdom menu. This entails a brief period of anarchy. Switching to a more advanced form of government will often improve the productivity of your people. It will also help to stem corruption and waste. Would you like to hold a revolution now? Well, and now you have two options, either not just yet or begin revolution. Not just yet means uh, that you don't want to do that. And uh, you might have two reasons for that. One is that you really don't want that form of government. And second reason is that you want to avoid the period of anarchy. And um, it's basically depending on the year. And I think we are actually in a quite good year. 3450 BC is so called Oedo year, meaning that if we switch the government now, there will be no period of anarchy at all. Uh, you can read more about this in the internet. Um, it's just a simple game mechanic uh, explained uh, how and how long the periods of anarchy are depending on the difficulty level and the year. So because it's a very good for us to hold a revolution now, I will begin the revolution. Let's select that and click OK. Swiss are revolting. Citizens demand new government. And because, um, as I said, there are no years of anarchy, we can switch the government to monarchy right now. Let's do that. 
And because we have switched um, the government, we can now increase the science rate, for example, to 70%, which we couldn't do before. Uh, we can't go higher because the maximum rate was 70 for monarchy, but I think that's uh, fine. We have total income of two and discoveries doing every five turns. You know, with science rate of 60, we would do them only every six turns. So it's uh, really beneficial to increase the science rate. Meridian proclaimed great pharaoh of new Swiss monarchy. That's what the newspaper said, at least. I don't know how can we have newspapers in 3450 BC, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, and let's go down with the archer. Let's go down with the settler as well, and down with the other archer. Okay, oh, and there is a good e hut. Very good, I like that. Um, let's quickly check the happiness, that's fine. This one we are producing total five science speakers. Let's have a look if our cities are about to grow. Yeah, I think Zurich is about to grow in, in two or three turns and burn as well. So it's good that we have these fortified units over here. They will apply or enforce the martial law. Okay, I think that's good enough. Uh, let's end the turn. And uh, now we want to go into the goodie hut. So, fingers crossed, let's get something good. You have discovered valuable metal deposits worth 25 gold. Well, that is not really that good, but uh, it will have to do. Okay, let's move a little bit over there. And again down, I want to see what's in there. This will take some time. Yeah, this will take some time. Okay. So let's concentrate on exploration. By the way, we have 91 gold already, meaning that we could uh, also rush uh, the production of uh, the settlers, for example. You can not only build them using the shields, but you can also buy them. And cost to complete the settlers now, and they would be available in the next turn, of course, not in this turn, is 125 gold, which we don't have. And I would definitely also not invest so much gold. So it's not rentable at the moment. But that's okay. Let's end the turn and see what happens. I think I told you I want to build a city right there. So let's do that, I think. Let's go over here, and in the next turn, we will build a city. Okay, the archer should go left now. Ooh, that's interesting. We have another special resource. By the way, if you want to have a look at uh, what these terrains are, you can switch to view pieces and then double click over here, and you will see the explanation for these uh, special resources. So like for example this one is silk, occurs on terrain type, type forest, produces one food, two shields and three trade arrows, which is a excellent uh, tile to have. And we can even read the descriptions over here, I didn't even know that. Wow, this is cool. Silk has been a valuable commodity for textiles since its properties were discovered in 27th century BC. Silk is obtained from the cocoon of the silkworm moth, which was originally native to the forest of China. The fine fibers of the cocoon is woven into cloth, which is used to make all types of clothing. Raw silk was obtained only from Asia until 550 AD, when two monks sent from the Roman Empire secretly stole silkworm eggs from China and brought them to Europe. Eventually, Silkworms were found in many areas throughout the world. Less expensive scientific fibers of the 20th century led to a decline in the silk market, but silk is still very popular in many types of clothing and other goods. Perfect. So, uh, yeah, from time to time I will be reading uh, the description of other useful things as well, mostly the special resources like whales and uh, 
uh, gems and so on and so on so let's uh, go back to move pieces because we want to move with this archer as well let's go to the left um okay we are closing to the south pole i guess because there's tundra over here so that's fine um let's check how we are doing we are doing quite okay and we have wow we can actually see this silk tile in our city as well so we have three special resources for zurich which is an ideal position and maybe we will make this city our primary city i will tell you more about that later on this could actually be a site for our super science city a so-called uh, ssc <laughs> and uh, yeah but it has been 20 minutes already so uh, i think it's time to end the turn let's just check burn again that's all fine and uh, click enter to end the turn uh, just a moment you have um, maybe seen or noticed that the burn has changed size to two because the food storage was full and our city grew in size now we have two citizens population of 30,000 uh, they need four food to feed themselves but we have a surplus of three and we now have a possibility to work on three tiles instead of uh, two with a size of one so our production has increased, our science output has increased, and uh, basically it's very good to have this uh, increase as much as you can afford. And you can't afford much under this uh, difficulty level before we start, you know, building temples and other wonders of the world. So, um, yeah okay but uh, i've been talking too much i wanted to end the episode here so i say quickly bye bye and till next time